What's up guys, Thomas here and welcome back to the channel and today we're doing the setup and first flight of the Emacs Baby Hawk 2 Analog. Let's get into it. Alright guys, if you're coming from my Baby Hawk unboxing video or my Express LRS video, welcome back to the channel and thank you. So I have all my parts laid out here in typical fashion from left to right. I have my goggles here. This is an analog drone, so I have my analog goggles. It's a box style goggles. We have the drone, obviously, the Baby Hawk 2 analog. Pretty awesome. And then we have our controller. This is the Jumper T Lite. On the back, you have a module. This is the Express LRS module. I'll be using this today to set up my drone. And I do have a Express LRS receiver in the back here. Pretty small, pretty nifty. I've done a few videos on the Express LRS. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link down below so you can take a look at those videos. So anyways, the setup here should be pretty simple. As usual, I've built a profile or I've built my model in my radio. So it has the name, it has the protocol, everything is in here. And I have my module in the back to communicate with my receiver. So that's already been built in here. And you would do that for any drone that you're about to start flying for the first time. I've already bounded or binded my radio to my drone. And I'll leave a link where you can find it. As I said before, I've done numerous videos on Express LRS. The process is very simple once you have these things configured. With that said, this, this is done. We're, we're done here. We're gonna go to the computer, go on Betaflight, make sure everything is uh, set up the way I want to. And typically you will do that for your drone as well just because you might have some switches that you wanna configure. You might wanna configure some of your modes in there and most importantly probably you wanna configure your OSD to your liking. So let's go to the computer. We'll set this up and then come back here later. All right guys, we're at the computer here. We have our devices here, my drone. We have the radio control and we also have the goggles here. I also have my fan here that I normally use. These things get pretty hot as you power it up, so you want to keep them cool with the fan. So I'll put the fan on, so once I power this up, it doesn't get too hot. All right, so let's get to beta flight. We're just gonna connect this and go straight to the CLI. Save this, so in case we jack this whole thing up. <laughs> Perfect. And we're just gonna save it so that now we're good to go here. All right, cool, so let's start from the top here. Set up RSSI 50, that's all good. All right, this is normal, that's fine. It looks like they're using UART1 for the VTS, which is good. And we're not, it has smart audio, which is good. UART2, this drone can be fitted with either an FR Sky receiver or Crossfire. Uh, in this case, or if you go digital, then you have the DJI system. I optioned to get this without any receivers, and I did put a Express LRS on there, as I said before. So that uses the Crossfire module or the Crossfire port on this drone. And I am using UART2 for that, so make sure this is checked if you're doing that as well. As far as configuration, that's all good, that's correct. All right, so this is what I was talking about. Make sure you have your serial uh, base receiver here because we have a pretty much a Express LRS which is transmitting through the Crossfire uh, wires here or ports. So uh, if you use an Expre Express LRS, make sure you have the Crossfire here chosen. Okay, everything here is good. We're just gonna fly through this as quickly as possible. All right, uh, this battery and power section looks pretty good. We're not gonna mess with that pin tuning. These are all pretty cool. Um, one thing you need to know here about this drone, if I remember correctly, there's two profiles in here. So we'll take a look at that when we get to, we can try it on the OSD as well. But apparently there's two profiles here. Uh, and one is for if you're just flying the drone by itself. And the second profile is in case you do have an action camera in the front, then um, they compensate for that with a different profile. So it flies just as well. Receiver, now, uh, my receiver isn't powered, but I'll still power this on right now. Let's see what happens. Sweet, so let's power this bad boy on. All right, so we have telemetry. All right, looks nice here. Let's go to the modes, we'll do that quickly. That's probably the most important. So let's see here, 
arm is set up very well. We are in angle, horizon. Now nah, that one's set up pretty well too. And then all to do now is my beeper and my crash flip. Oh, it's right here. Let's see if that one Pretty loud beeper, not bad. Let's save this bad boy. Okay, so let's go to where NT is already set. NTSD, oh, that's pretty good. NTSC, uh, that's good. Wow, this is a pretty good layout, guys. This is exactly what I do with this. Let's put the crosshairs in there. All right, so the way I lay my stuff out is this is all important stuff um, pertaining to the controls. Meaning, all right, do I have control of the quad and what mode it's in? So that once you see this, you know what mode you're in, like if it's behaving properly and you can set this and forget about it. And these two tell you how healthy the signal is. Am I gonna lose signal? Should I turn back? And if I feel something is wrong here, like, hey, what power output am I on? Like, okay, here's the power output and then the channel. So this is all just pertaining to the health of the, I was gonna say airplane. Uh, this is more, this area here needs to be clear because I want to fly and make sure I see where I'm going, wires, trees, and this is all goes away except this cross here. It gives me a good average reference point with the horizon, especially for an image. This just tells me the flight parameters. Okay, battery level, time to come in, and then throughout a level, if this is too high when I'm hovering or just doing something, then this will give me a good indicator of just the performance of the bird if it's heavy, if it's working too hard. And then the flight time to see if this flight time and the battery voltage matches. So if I see a low flight time, battery's going down, then I know my battery is either not healthy or the drone is consuming too much power. So that's enough information for me. Some guys put ESC temperatures and so forth, but you have all these warnings here. We'll talk about it here right now that you can use to back you up if things get too crazy. Um, link quality. I've done this before and these things just go crazy. So we're not going to set these alarms sometimes. It just flashes the whole flight sometimes. And that can vary from different protocols. So we're just going to leave these. It's important, but you have the information right here. So you're good. Okay. This looks all good. Pretty cool. And then the VTX. We have to change that. That's good to know. Uh, race band 4. I usually use 7. I thought this was a 500 milliwatt VTX. Okay, 400 for now. I'll take a look at that. This VTX table might be off. And that's probably why it's it's showing that. Let's see here. Ah, uh, I don't know what value to put here. I need to look it up. I don't know. So we'll just go back to three. Now everything here has changed. Smart audio, yes, device ready. That's good. They're communicating power on pit mode. No, all right. So this is all good, guys. We're good. Let's unplug this thing. Let's see if we get a signal here. If we have the camera cap on this, this thing should come on automatically. Take the camera cap off. And I am getting nothing. Okay, that's not good. How's this showing race band seven, but channel A6. Okay guys, the drone is set up here. We do have a VTX a signal. We're gonna go through the table, finish the rest of the setup, and then go for a flight, hopefully today. <laughs> All right guys, we're back from the computer. We're at the desk and we have our drone here. We have the goggles and the radio. Setup was pretty simple, pretty, yeah, there's some, there's some gotchas in there. Um, also the VTX threw me for a loop. I thought it was a 500 milliwatt VTX. And I'll take a look at it on the computer here very shortly. Maybe that's not a, a frequency that's supported with this VTX. But I did an auto scan on my goggles and I eventually found it. I think it was A6 uh, channel, um, but it doesn't line up with what I'm seeing in beta flight. So, all right guys, so, Drone is set up here, ready to go. Last but not least is the props here. We're gonna set the props up here. So if you saw on beta flight, you saw that these are a prop inward configuration so that when these motors turns, the propeller turns inward towards the frame. Same with the back, they will turn inward. So we're gonna set this propellers up for that. This one looks good already. That's gonna be inward. This one here, props inward. 
And last but not least, this one inward. All right, looks all good. All right, so we need eight of these screws. So let's get on to it. Alright guys, props are on. This drone looks pretty amazing. Um, the only thing left to do here is that I realize is just the camera. I don't know how to figure out this camera situation here. There was no mount included in the box, so I don't have a camera mount. So I'm just scratching my head, how do I mount this? This, not a lot of room here to mount a camera. Uh, typically I use my Firefly x Lite camera here. This is like the new kid on the block here, for me at least, and it's a relatively new camera as well. Uh, typically what I've done in the past with other drones, because they've come only with the smaller end, is um, I'd use like a GoPro mount and then just stick this on here with double-sided tape and then let it rip. Anyways, this thing here is set up. We're gonna go outside. Thomas from the future here, and just a quick update before we go outside to fly this thing. Just for your own knowledge here, um, I went outside to try to do a simple single first flight here and I got some pretty bad breakup in my video transmission. And as you saw earlier, as I was doing the setup in beta flight and then trying to get the visuals on my goggles, I usually have all my drones to race band seven. That's just my preferred channel, but I couldn't find any visuals on this. I did a scan before I went out and it was on a different channel. So. No big deal, went out there, flew, and the VTX is breaking up. And sure enough, this TBS VTX here is restricted. It is locked. It comes from the factory locked. Surprise, surprise. So uh, before you go out and fly this thing, I would highly recommend that you unlock this thing because this thing is not only limited to certain channels, um, and one of my channels, which made sense why I couldn't choose Race Band 7 in beta flights, those are one of the restricted channels. It's also restricted in power. It comes from the factory only 25 milliwatts, and that's it. And that makes sense. Well, when I say it makes sense, uh, TBS, they did limit it because that's the legal maximum power output they can use. It's kind of weird. Mostly any other VTX I've used in the past, you can select them very easily, even with smart audio, and I couldn't do it with smart audio. In fact, I would choose it in smart audio. It would say that I selected it and the channel, but it wouldn't show on the VTX. So it's not working, it's locked. Just make sure you unlock it. Um, this thing uh, is supported to 400 milliwatts and there is a, a more recent update which puts it even higher. It, there's no definitive number, but it's higher than 500 milliwatts. So that should be good. The problem here to unlock this, there's only one button on this specific VTX. That button does everything as far as menu, selection, changing. So it's really complicated. Um, I will leave links down below for the instruction manual or the resources how to maneuver this and get to that menu. Uh, long story short, you have to press the button for 30 seconds to just unlock it and then you can go select your channel, your band, and your power output. And that's what I'm going to do right now and then hopefully that fixes it and then we're going to go outside and fly this drone. <laughs> 